Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm your host, Aaron. You're watching all the way up crypto. Thanks for tuning in. Those of you that watch me all the time, sorry I've been away lately. Uh, didn't have much to talk about there for a little bit, and then all last week I was absolutely miserable with the flu or a cold or I don't know what. So anyway, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, this is probably going to be like a general informational uh, video. So those of you that have Cardano, ADA, very good, very good project. Hopefully it succeeds. So the test net um, is going to be going live soon. I believe I may have done a video about the test net. I don't remember. It's probably been about two weeks at least since I did a video. Uh, so the test net, the anticipated date was today for it to go live. Uh, but it wasn't held in strong regards as to it actually being today the night. <clears throat> so if you're holding if you were holding ADA back on I believe the fifth was a snapshot or the 29th. Um, if you're holding it in Yoroi or the Dallas because they were full node wallets, um, then you are able to participate in the test net, which will allow you to stake your test net ADA and earn some test net ADA, which when the mainnet goes live, you'll be able to convert that test net ADA that you earned into uh, regular ADA on the mainnet. <clears throat> so nice little thing uh, for the Cardano people to do and work that in there. What I like about what Cardano is doing is they're adding another level of game theory with their proof of stake concept. It's one thing for everybody to do proof of stake, um, but then you usually have the whales that are, you know, just raking in all the, the big stuff. It's like the rich keep getting richer. Even though the percent is still the same, you're not holding a lot, you're not making a lot. With Cardano, they're creating these stake pools. So you're going to delegate your stake to a stake pool. Which is kind of cool because it's going to create another level of competition. So there's no limit on the number of pools that can be created. Which is nice. It's permissionless. Anybody can run their own stake pool. Now the percentage that you earn will vary depending on the stake pool. Depending on its size. Up to a certain limit. At least so far this is what I've found out. Why does that matter? Well, because you could get some stake pools that are just so big because they're offering the best percentage. That's why there's going to be a certain point where they can't get any bigger, so they can't continue to offer the best um, interest or return on your stake. I think it's a cool idea. Um, so it just adds another level of competition, that whole game theory uh, that ties into this stuff. So. Uh, I think it'll be a successful model. Um, and then you have all the other stuff Cardano's working on behind the scenes on all their other releases. It, after Shelly Testnet goes out, um, some of these other, or after the Shelly release comes on the mainnet, uh, which I don't know how long it's going to be in Testnet things. I'm imagining a few months to several months it'll be in Testnet. Um, and then we'll go to mainnet after they make sure everything's working good and the bugs are taken care of, we'll move on. Um, so time will tell. Uh, you know, the one complaint with Cardano is how slow the progress is moving, but you can't do anything until you have that strong foundation. I mean, uh, nobody wants to talk about Bitcoin in its early days and what it took to mine it or to create a wallet anything it wasn't easy um, so you got to get that stuff taken care of on a fundamental level and then you can move on 
Uh, what else is going on? Oh, the market. I know what I need to do. I need to do a market video for you guys and show you what I drew about three weeks ago as far as how Bitcoin's going to go um, based off my intuition, uh, based off of some economics, based off of, uh, I don't know, based off of just, you know, all the information I take in, you know, the more information you have, the better idea you have on things and how things can unfold. Uh, so I have a good idea or at least my potential path for Bitcoin to follow. So I think we're going to go down yet. I've said it before. I think we're going to go down somewhere between 4200 and 6200-ish. And that's where we bought them out again. And that should be somewhere around the timing of the halving, give or take a month or two months, maybe three of those. But I would say within a month or two, around the halving is when we should be in a bull trend back up and we should see another year and a half, I'd say 18 months at least of a bull market taking us up through 2021. Okay. Uh, what else? What else? What else? I think there was something else. Uh, I don't know. I did read a couple articles today about the maker dial and how it would be very possible for someone to hack it and dump all the ethereum uh, or dump all uh, i don't know the economic side of it the possibility of it happening i think for slim uh, you should watch the video of andreas antonopoulos i'll put a link in down below to watch it I encourage you to watch it because I go back and I continue to you don't hear much about the lightning network until something comes out about it and then people blast it. and then people have their gripes about the lightning network and I like to take the fact over the possible quote unquote issues that people have with the lightning network I'm under the impression that the Lightning Network is going to be a great level two solution to the scaling debate and provide some of the most awesome stuff for layer two to move forward with. So when you watch a video from Andreas Antonopoulos called One Network Many Chains um, or Many Coins, I can't remember the exact title, but it's One Network. What the Lightning Network <laughs> is is a nice solution to provide um, the ability for multiple chains because it's not just specific to Bitcoin. You've got to take into consideration all the coins that use Bitcoin's fundamental code. And if they're capable or able to operate with the Lightning Network, well, now they just became interoperable cross chain and essentially can have another decentralized exchange that's more peer-to-peer -peer that is fast. That's lightning fast. So one of the things you can imagine the lightning network being able to do is paying for someone, paying someone in Ethereum and getting a uh, change back in Bitcoin if you choose to do so, if they're offering it. Uh, now, do I see it being used for that? I, you know, I, I'm under the consensus that Bitcoin is digital gold. And it's stuck that way because of its value right now. And I think it'll be used to create stable coins the way Ethereum's uh, maker dollars. To create the DAI stable coin or PSI stable coin, whatever. Uh, and I am pretty sure that Bitcoin will be added to that list that you'll be able to collateralize. So, I don't know how many people will transact on a small scale with things like Bitcoin. Things that are a store of value that people will stick their wealth into. Uh, I do see 
these store of value coins in these blockchains creating niches that they're really good at and becoming a store of value but using whatever the niche is that they're good at. So time will be told on what happens with that stuff, I think. So I think that's about it that's on my mind and the updates. Uh, Komodo keeps pushing along with their Atomic Dex updates. So they're still, you know, in their beta stage or whatever, letting people test it, bringing on more users, so on and so forth. So um, hang in there with that one. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it. Oh, Komodo is actually going to allow people to create stable coins with their uh, Antara framework. So more stable coins will be coming on board, I'm sure. All right, I hope you're all doing well. Take care, and until we meet again, stay crypto, my friends. Peace.